up. I'll get him. <laughs> what, if anything, did you know about Drew before you got here? Because obviously, I mean, I, these guys are showing up wrong. You know, uh, before I got here, I didn't know a ton. You know, uh, like, probably like a lot of coaches, I just, you're, you're really immersed in the program that you're currently working at, and, and you, you know, whatever you see on the Sports Center or the highlights around the country. Uh, but when as the opportunity arose, um, you could see the potential, right, when you just watch his film, like some of the things I've talked about before, his wittiness, you know, his decision making, those kind of things are really hard to coach. And they're very, very evident when you watch him right away. And then to get here and acknowledge, which I've said many times before about the kind of just person he is, you know, character, but then like his, his want to get better and growth is really... I mean, it's next level. It's second to none that I've worked with. How hard is it to find somebody who has those traits of understanding the game and seeing it the way he does and his decision making, those sort of things? Super hard. That's why NFL quarterbacks get paid like a bazillion dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And people yeah. spend a lot of money even if they haven't been proven that way. You know what I'm saying? And I don't even give you a facetious answer, but it is, they're hard. It's rare to find. It's hard to evaluate. Um, people have written a lot of books about evaluating the quarterback position to play at, our, at the college level and the next level in there. As many success stories there are, there's probably 10 quote unquote misses, however you want to define that. So those characteristics that he has, the fact that you can see them um, as, you, you know, as you're coaching him and you just observe his play um, is exciting. Having played offensive line, just kind of, what do you think you've you kind of learned about the quarterback position from that perspective that's maybe helped you with Drew? Well, um, you know, probably, I don't know that anything beyond, um, you know, the understanding of protections and things like that, you know what I mean? I think maybe for him, the importance of his involvement in the run game, right? And I think that's true of any quarterback, you know, making sure we're in the right play or they're controlling people off the edges, you know, things like that. Um, I don't know that my old line background helps with that. I think that's just good coaching, right? You know what I mean? I don't know that you had to have play O-line to do that, but um, certainly um, that would be something that, that, that we won't want to ever compromise, our ability to run the football well. One of the things Drew said was that learning how to call plays in this system takes some time. Mm -hmm. uh, how has he done with that? How have all the quarterbacks done with that, uh, given that, I mean, it's kind of brand new to that. Yep, yep. Uh, and so, um, Coming in right away, that was one of the things I talked about. You know, we, we use a lot of tags. I said very pro style. You, you've heard me exp use that expression before, in the sense of you know we're using tags and we're we're doing that because we have a lot of variations, perhaps, of what we're doing that are fundamentally the same but different alignments and splits and running the same routes from all these spots. Um, and you need to tell people how to do that. You know, you either can tell them with these tags, or you could just have them wrote memorized when we call this play this is what we want you to do this yeah. week so a tag uh, is like a shorthand yeah. like yeah. one word or two words. yeah right I, I always use it like our vernacular is like uh, lego pieces okay. right i think if you've heard before yeah. right because someone asked me if i like legos yeah. Uh, <laughs> big lego guy. yeah big yeah. lego guy uh but uh but like so you just that's all you're doing within a play is you're taking these lego pieces you're stacking up to make a play and so once kids and people and players understand what the lego pieces are putting them together becomes pretty easy how much uh, how much has coming from a big 12 school led to having Unique conversations about playing WBU in your opener. I don't know that I've had any unique ones about them specifically coming here. Um, that program and Coach Brown we actually we go way back when he was at Troy. We were up off. We played in a bowl game, and then we came into the league when we were at Kansas, and they were there. And so there's quite a bit of familiarity uh, with what he's done in the past. Um, and his staff, and we, I got a boatload of respect for what they do, for sure, for sure. There's something you can tell us about Drew with regards to the guy that we don't see off the field. Like, have you had him over to your house? Or like, how have you kind of gotten to know Drew the person? Hmm. See, now I don't know if I could say all the things I really Go want ahead. to probably. Go ahead, that's the, yeah. Um, that's why we're here. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something funny. I don't know if I can. Uh, he, 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 I'm surprised, and this is maybe an age thing, it's not exclusive to Drew, mm -hmm. I'm surprised at maybe the quarterback room in general at uh, how they don't pick up on my movie quotes nearly as quickly <laughs> as they should. And I think it's, it's starting to become a generational thing. Are they all from um, the 80s? Yeah, well, 80s, 90s, you know what I mean? Even like things like old school, which I don't think is that old, but then you got to remember, <laughs> that like came out when like, you know what I mean, they were born. And so they're not going to, you know, Frank the Tank, right? You know what I mean? They're not going to do that. And they don't get that stuff as much. Um, 
Uh, so I, I kind of have challenged those guys to up their game in that area. Has Danny O'Brien helped to kind of bridge that gap? He does. That's a great. That's a great point. Danny is doing a fantastic job of coaching quarterback, but he's also being the for me. You know, he is. That's exactly what it is. he's a bridge between the generational gap. Yeah. I know that at Kansas last year you opened up the floor for some players to call plays. To yeah. Yeah. Well, offense. not call plays, but that cut up with some. Yeah. Is, sure. Is that yeah. something that you've Man. done with the offense? Uh, we've year? done some things. You know what I mean? But not quite to that extent yet. Probably mostly because of uh, where we've been at in fall camp, do you know what I mean? And, and, and maybe there's some newness to it. But specifically, since we've talked a lot about the quarterback room here, that's that's a group. And I've said this all along, this, the communication and dialogue with those people is really important. Is that your, that was used last year, where you used a, a player's play? Oh, a ton, yeah. For sure. How much? Oh, I don't know. I can give you the exact number. I think they came in. I had a notebook full. Um, but there were some. They had some good ideas. You know I mean, they had to stay within like the framework of of things that you know we would do. If they come out too far left, you're like, I come bullshit out. You know, like we had an old lineman like, give me a snap. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, we're not going to do that. And then I found out he can actually throw the football really well. His name is Dominic Cooney. He's with the Niners now. Buddy. Is there um, an element of your offense that was evolved to contend with some Big 12 defenses in terms of three safeties, a lot of soft coverages, and things we see in the Big 12, and that seems to be kind of spreading around college football in, in some aspects. Is there is there anything like that you have seen and done to kind of attack those ty- uh, styles of defense? Yeah, I think, you know, when you, when you when you ask that question, I think if you're trying, as a program, if you're trying to take the next step, whatever the next step might be for your program, you're going to evaluate the teams that you feel like you need to beat, or to your point, maybe, is there is there a, a, a certain front or structure, like you talked about three safety defenses that multiple teams are running in the league that you need to make sure that you have a really good schematic understanding of or a way to attack it, um, which coming here, that was the first step, right? You know what I mean? Worrying about our players and then what does the Big Ten look like in terms of defense? And it's always evolving week to week. You know what I mean? Player to player, team to team, um, what you're doing. So there's, I I challenge our guys this, and I I don't want to skirt your question, but I just tell our guys, if we just worry about ourselves and what we're doing offensively and how we're executing, we have enough things that we could grow or shrink any packages to attack any kind of defense. Are there... Go ahead. We've heard a lot about Trey Wallace this camp. Um, what, what do you think he's done to really separate himself from the pack? Uh, I think that when you talk about uh, an individual's ability to separate themselves, um, maybe within a position group, uh, you look for things being done consistently. And, uh, you know, we talk in this program about being con- consistently good is better than occasionally great. And he is, he's shown to be consistently good right at what we're doing. So, so uh, that is what you observe. You can see the guy make a play, and then you see him make two more plays, and then you see the next day he does it again, right? So it's not like just one play a day. It's a, it's it might not be just some super, you know, ESPN deal. It might just be consistently doing what we're asking guys to do execution. How's Julian Fleming look? Kyle Julian's look really good. Yep, he's another guy who's been really, I think, especially this back half of fall camp, has his consistency has really, really erodes. Do you know what I mean? I think he, in his mind, if you were to ask him, I bet he would say, gosh, I started to kind of slow. I think he had probably a few plays that he wished he had back, but then really in this back half, I've been he's, he's been done a great job. Let's talk about player 